What I want to talk about is why I even started this lifestyle and what have I gained thus far from it. Why, why did I decide to do this? I watched videos four or five years ago. I discovered uh, Bob Wells, Cheap RV Living. And my daughter turned me on to him. She goes, Mom, look at this. And I looked at it and was like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. So I watched um, Cheap RV Living and I learned so much. Over the past, four, then for like two, three years, I learned everything I could from all of Bob Wells' videos. And he did the tours of vans and SUVs, cars, whatever. I remember D. she's called Box. Box Van D now, I, I remember her from way back. And then so many of them I've um, watched. And Sue Ann, I've learned a lot from her. Carolyn's RV um, from uh, Serene and Simple from Linda. And so I learned and then um, about two and a half years ago, a, um, an event offered itself to me. My daughter and son-in-law, my son-in-law was transferred to Cincinnati. And uh, my daughter lived right beside me. So I was very close to my granddaughter. I, uh, I thought, you know what, this is it. This is it, I'm gonna do this. And I got rid of everything. I had come in and I know, I've already done a video talking about this, but I thought I'd do it again. Um, so I can explain some of, um, some of y'all who are on this uh, watching and subscribed haven't gone back to the earlier one, so we'll just do it again. So I, I got rid of everything, everything, except things that I needed. I did get a, a storage, I, thought, I wasn't sure about them, and then when I left, I got rid of the storage and got rid of everything. So that's what I did, and then um, I drove, said goodbye to my kids that were here, my grandkids, and I drove to uh, Cincinnati. So I drove to Cincinnati and I stayed. They bought a they bought a huge house, and they gave they they bought it with the intent that I was going to be there and I was going to help them out. I went there and I had a part of the house with my own opening and you know. So I was there and I stayed with them for the first year. So I went and got a job. I eventually worked at Amazon um, down in uh, Northern Kentucky. And so I just went full time in my van at that point so I could do some traveling around Ohio. I've been in my van for a while now. I was lived in my van for three months in Tucson before I left for Ohio. So I got used to it. I was sort of like practicing. But one thing I did notice during that time was I'd never been on the road that much. <laughs> I mean, I'd never dri driven them. I mean, I was constantly driving and I was testing out how much gas and and um, I didn't have as much in my van as I do now. Yeah, I've, I've kind of added quite a few things on. Inside, causes more weight. But, uh, I feel like I'm in the groove with the world because I'm out here more. I'm seeing it more. I'm enjoying it more. So I know what Bob Wells said. Um, I know what he means when he says that, you know, he, he's happiest in nature. And he feels that nature is everything to him. I don't believe that nature is everything to me, but I do feel more a part of it. So that's one of the that's one of the um, the effects of this lifestyle. I feel free. If you see a smile, you say, "Oh, you always say." If you see a smile on my face, it's because I am very happy. I'm having the time of my life. I feel like my life began. Oh, there's a couple dancing over there, it's so cute. I feel like my life has just begun. It, you know, another thing that it did, it literally did open my eyes and my heart to no gratitude. I am so grateful for my minivan. I am so grateful. And I know you nomads out there who are living this lifestyle and watching this, I know you know what I mean. I am so grateful. I can move my things, everything I own, I can move them like that. I can move them to another place. Another thing too is 
my home, every, my home is always like right, right close. <laughs> it's not like I don't, oh, I gotta go home. Bye, or I gotta go home. No, my home's right there. I remember Christmas, um, I was at my son's and they were out of paper towels. And I said, well, let me run home. And I got some paper, extra paper towels. <laughs> and he looked at me, I said, you know, right out there, right in the parking lot. Um, yeah, that's my home. And I love my home. Um, I don't know if some of you have actually seen the inside of my home, um, doing a tour and everything. Um, but I mean, I got, you know, I got colored lights in there and, uh, yeah, I got decorated nice just for me. It's what I like. I didn't want to go. I actually tried. Okay. I actually tried to put more decorations in it and it just annoyed me. <laughs> it's like, this is too much. You know, it's like, get this out of here. I know some nomads and it's, I think it's, it's a personal style and some nomads they have their whole um the whole inside like covered with um really um decorative like material and you know like the 60s thing and I'm, no I I I, I it, that would make me feel like closed in I just like to be simple a little flower I have one flower you see that that one uh, pink flower I have this little flower I got Ikea they really look real they're like those little uh, pink roses one has a little butter it's a well-made um, artificial thing but um, I enjoy it and and that's about as decorative as I'm gonna get I am this close almost ready to get new new um, the new drawers, the plastic drawers. I'm ready to get those. I'm tired of the ones I have. Right? I want them all to be the same. I've yet to find what I want. And it's a kind of a shame that I've looked all through, if anybody knows of any place to get them, I would like more more um, options. They're either the, the brown weave or, I do not want clear. I don't want to see what's in there. I, I don't want to see what's in there. I don't want to see what's in my drawers. No. Um, I I want. I mean, why not some pinks and blues? And I have seen grays recently, pinks and grays. But I want some like turquoise or purples, something. And I don't want see through. They'll have purple, but it's just the the frame is purple. And then they have the clear drawers, and no, I don't want that. So. Um, yeah, I have actually felt a lot of gratitude. Um, the gratitude, I think, comes from just being out here. Another thing, too, the gratitude comes from the weight that's off my shoulders. I am so free. When you get rid of possessions, unnecessary things, the weight, it just falls off. And it's a sigh of relief. So there's another thing are the the new sites. I'm out here seeing so many things. Now I was having fun. You've seen my videos. I was in Las Vegas and and just having lives on BLM land. I mean the options I can be out. I can be in the city, out of the city, out in the wilderness. And there are cool places that I can go to this summer because of um, higher elevations. So, yeah. I meet new people all the time. People, I meet people that have the same um, personalities, the same um, experiences as mine, the same wants and needs. They want to be free. I think that that um, being out here is uh, really fantastic. I, I, I love to ponder things. Now, I don't know if you remember the uh, Maslow's hierarchy. Down here was your basic food, water, shelter. And then the thing goes up, um, you know, goes up the line of needs. And as those needs are met, then you can go up one more ladder, up one more ladder. It might be uh, learning, education, um, another one is, um, you know, uh, interpersonal satisfaction and all the way up to the little point where you are, you've reached it. You can, if all these other needs are met, you're up way up there. It's called Maslow's, um, I think it's Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy. You can look it up online. It's been, um, taught for years. And so my daughter, uh, my second daughter, she's a child psychologist. So, you know, I, uh. We, I talked about it with her. I said, what do you think? 
Because when I go to a new city, I have to kind of start all over again. I have to like, well, where's the laundromat? Okay, now where do I go to wash my car? Um, do they have, are the turning lights before or after the green light? You know, I mean, every city has a different, um, a different system and a different rhythm. So I pondered that. I said, well, what do you think? I go, does it always leave me down here where I'm just in survival all the time and I'm not reaching up on those levels? Or is it making me more intelligent, inner, inner intelligence to where I can figure things out faster? This is like, because even going into a different laundromat, I mean, how many people, if you use a laundromat, how many people go to the same laundromat every time? I mean, they know right where the coin machine is. They know which washers work best, which dryers work best, et cetera, et cetera. Well, when I go into a new city and to a new uh, laundromat, I'm kind of like, okay, well, I'm wondering now, like, where, where's the coin machine? Um, well, I hope the coin machine works properly so I don't put money in there and then I don't get anything back. There's all those little things and you can have doubts there that I don't want to be always on this lower level going on. As it turns out, and, and, and she agreed, she goes, I don't know, Mom. She goes, I don't know. Um, interesting, interesting idea. So, but with this um, breaking the habit of being yourself with Joseph Dispenza and with the quantum physics, when he, he proposes that we need to get out of these habits because when we're doing these day-to-day -day minutia things like do, doing laundry, getting, getting up, May go back over there, making coffee, get in a car, drive. When we get rid of all of this, which I think nomads do, they're they're getting rid of the past because they're always in a new place, or at least new nomads are. They're always rediscovering new places, so they they don't have this to rely on anymore. So after reading this book, it's like it is creating almost a new personality it's it, you're 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 creating a higher um thinking inside of yourself the possibilities are endless and you know what i've noticed that so anybody please don't ever feel sorry for me life out here is um it's wondrous one of the greatest advantages i have noticed from this lifestyle is no fear. I don't have fear anymore. Sleeping in my van, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to sleep in my van. I don't know if I was completely alone out on BLM land. Um, yeah, there would be a lot of caution. Be caution. And I probably wouldn't do it totally alone if I knew that I was the only one for a mile around. I do like being in the city, but I do like out, being out. But I want, I want to know that there are other people around too. But as far as the fear of doing this, a fear of sleeping in my fear, those things, I don't feel that I don't fear this virus. I don't fear getting sick. So far beyond being frightened or worried. I just don't live my life that way. Which is really a good thing because we were talking about the cortisone. Worry and stress creates cortisone that destroys the body. It destroys your bones, your organs, your heart. Um, yeah, it destroys all of that. Um, this is a great lifestyle. And anybody who thinks I'm the only one doing it, <laughs> or I'm crazy. Yep. So, is, I think that's pretty much it. These are the effects of living the nomad life. And I'd love to hear from you nomads out there. And I know you're out there. Okay, guys, I love you all. And I hope you had a really good Easter. It's still Easter for me. You'll get this tomorrow. Love you. Mwah.